welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan. Today's video, I have a recipe and a mukbang for you. Yes, one skin, woohoo! So today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a Korean curry, Korean slash Japanese curry. And uh, if you guys don't know, it's basically like, it's like a very distinct type of curry. It's definitely nothing like Indian curry or Thai curry. It's like, it's its own thing and it is delicious. Let me just see if I can get in closer. Can you still see this? Yes. So this is definitely one of the foods from my childhood. My mom made this very frequently for us and I love it so much. So this is the brand that I'm using. This is a Japanese brand from what it looks like. And uh, yeah, this is vegan. So I tried to find a Korean brand that was vegan friendly and I could not. So I had to pick the Japanese one, but I think it's pretty much the same thing. So, I mean, it looks the same as I remember, and it smells the same. I haven't really tasted it yet, so we'll see. So this is really easy to make. It seriously is a matter of just chopping up some veggies, adding some water, and then adding some of this curry stuff. So, without further ado, uh, here is how you make the curry. Alright guys, so this is a close-up of the brand that I'm using and if you want to find this, you could probably find it at any Asian supermarket or in the Asian section of a big supermarket. And I'm using half of this box right here, one of these packets, and apparently this is good for six servings so you can adjust accordingly. And I'm chopping up some onions to start with, just one onion. And you want to chop them up into like relatively big like pieces, so bite-sized pieces I would say. Other vegetable is the potato. So the common vegetable that I remember that we used are onions, potatoes, and carrots. And here I'm also adding sweet potatoes. So I'm using about three medium-sized potatoes and I think three of these small sweet potatoes. Once again, you can, you know, mix and mash, add whatever veggies you want to but this is kind of like what I remember to be a more traditional style of Korean curry. And you can also add any other protein that you want to add as well. Yeah, I was just too lazy to add anything else. So I'm just chopping up the sweet potatoes and potatoes up into little bite-sized cubes, or my attempt to add cubes. And I'm also chopping up some carrots. I'm not using too many carrots. These are carrots that were in our garden. So they're kind of like really sad little carrots. But if you're using like normal sized carrots, maybe you want to use like, I don't know, three or four carrots, something like that. But carrots and potatoes go really well with this curry. So I, don't, I do recommend using those veggies. So then you have it all together in a big bowl and I kept the onions separately because we're gonna cook the onions first and in a big, I don't know, what is this, wok, pot, whatever, you are going to cook up the onions. I'm using water to cook up the onions instead of oil because I don't feel like we need to add oil to this dish, but it's up to you if you wanna cook it with oil first. So we're gonna soften the onions a bit and then add the rest of the vegetables. And then we're gonna add the water. Now I'm using about three and a half cups of water because that was the amount according to the curry packet for the amount of curry that I was using. But in hindsight, I would have definitely added a bit more water because the curry turned out to be a lot thicker than I expected. Anyways, you're gonna bring that to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, you're gonna cover this up. You're gonna turn down the heat to a simmer and then you're gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes have softened completely. So now about 15 minutes later, I'm just gonna take a fork and I'm just going to poke it into one of the potatoes and it went in very smoothly so I knew it was done and at this point you can add the curry that I mentioned so I'm adding that entire packet right there and at first I just started off with half the packet because I wasn't sure and then I ended up adding the rest of that little packet afterwards so what you want to do is you want to add it and then you're going to break it apart and it should melt pretty fast in the hot water and you're just gonna keep kind of breaking it apart, stirring it, and then it should just melt easily into that hot water. And the water should just automatically thicken and it will just make the curry, it's that easy. So 
you're just gonna keep stirring and stirring for about five minutes until all of that curry packet has dissolved and it's turned into like a thick a relatively thick curry now remember that this is going to thicken even more over time so even after you've cooked it it's going to thicken more so if you want like a more liquidy curry then you want to add more water at this stage but yeah that is what it should look like you're pretty much done you can just serve it on rice and you're finished So now that you know how to make the curry, we're just going to dig right in. So I asked you guys on Instagram and on Snapchat to ask me some questions. And I think I got a lot more questions on uh, Instagram. So let's start with that one. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go right into this. So this curry, you're supposed to eat it with rice. Um, yeah, that, that's how you eat this curry. <laughs> And this right here is a type of kimchi, and it's called kaktugi. Kaktugi, and it's basically like radish. Yeah, it's like radishes, but they're cut up into small pieces, and it's called kaktugi. So um, it's like so good with this curry. Like this is probably my second favorite type of kimchi, and it's seriously so good with curry. I don't know what it is. It's better than regular kimchi with curry, I think. Um, but I don't know, I mean, do you want to see a recipe for this? For this kaktugi? I'll have to ask my mama because she made this. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix it all up together. This curry turned out to be a little bit thicker than I remember. Um, you can definitely add more water. Um, a lot of Korean curry is quite like liquidy, but this one's a bit thicker. Maybe that is the difference between Korean and Japanese curry. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to dig in first and then I'll start with the questions. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is what mommy Tang does, like put it here. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much tastes the same as I remember Korean curry to taste. Um, it has a slight spice. I think this is like medium hot. But it's not like I don't think it's spicy. Um Yeah, it's really good. Mm. I think I would definitely like it to be a little bit more liquidy, but other than that, it is so good. All right, should I answer some questions? Okay. Okay, let's see here. Um, first question. Do you think about getting married and having kids in the future? Love your videos, hello from Greece. Oh, hello. Um, and thank you. Do I think about having, yeah, I do. I do, I think I wanna get married and have kids. Uh, I don't know if I want, my own children like I'm thinking I want to maybe adopt kids or have my own or a bit of both I don't know I don't really want to think too much about it because then like if it doesn't happen then you'll just be like my life is a failure <laughs> but yeah I do I do want to eventually get married I don't know when mmm And this is honestly so easy because like you don't have to even add any spices you're just adding this with water that's it you literally cannot screw this up okay uh, next question hi i was wondering how you find the amazing vegan restaurants you go to while you are abroad um also what is the biggest challenge of being vegan while traveling thank you for your question i find vegan restaurants through happy cow which is an app slash website and i also find some on tripadvisor and i just google 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 you can also follow like instagram accounts um every time if i see something if i see like a vegan restaurant on instagram and i want to try it i just like take a screenshot and like and then i can give it a try but yeah happy cow and tripadvisor are great and what was the second part of the question? Uh, what is the biggest challenge of being vegan while traveling? I think the biggest challenge is, well, this depends on where you are, right? So I think people's attitudes um, toward veganism might be different depending on where you go. 
So if you go somewhere where people don't understand veganism or they just don't get it, then I think it would be quite difficult, especially if you come from a place where people are a little bit more understanding of your dietary choices. So I have a feeling Asia would be a difficult place to be vegan. What staple slash essential kitchen food items would you recommend a new transitioning vegan start with? Um, I have a video on like vegan grocery guide where I basically like show everyone like everything that I buy generally. But you need beans. I think beans, grains are super important to have in your kitchen all the time. Um, lentils, things like that. Uh, you want to get yourself a good amount of spices so that you can just like chuck that shit into like everything you're cooking. Pasta, of course, is great. You know, different types of sauces. A lot of sauces are vegan, so stock up on those things. Um, veggie stock cubes, those are, you know, pretty handy to have. Um, just, yeah, check out my grocery guide, okay. Best vegan restaurant you have been to abroad? Oh, that is difficult. I've been to so many good ones. Like, um, I don't think like, there's one, like, specific one that I want to name. Um, oh my god, that's so hard. God, I don't know. There was uh, one in Seattle called Plum Bistro that was amazing. Um, there's one in Lisbon that I went to that was quite memorable. And now I can't remember the name. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Um, something like Buddha or something? No. Oh, it's called the Food Temple. I was close. Buddha, Food Temple. <laughs> mm. That one was so good. Mm. I also remember going to New York and trying a restaurant called Candle 79 and they had this thing called the Seitan Piccata and it was so good so that one was really memorable too and there's so many other ones that I'm sure I will remember at some point but right now I am drawing a blank by the way it's probably getting dark now even though it's like 4 30 but Canada in the winter gets dark so fast. Next question, which are your favorite YouTubers that don't post vegan slash food related content? Oh, good question. Um, oh my God. Yeah, I've been watching quite a few different types of YouTubers lately. Um, I've been watching this travel channel called Damon and Joe and I'm like obsessed. Okay, these, these kids, they're like uh, this girl and a guy, I think they're in their like early to mid 20s and they basically like travel everywhere and um, they just have this really infectious energy and very like, kind of like, I don't give a shit, like let's have fun, you know, that kind of attitude and I just love it. And they're just really fun to watch and uh, yeah, I really recommend their channel uh, for some positive, enlightening content. And they also speak like a million languages together. I don't even know how many languages they speak, but they speak like English and Portuguese and um, French and Spanish, I think, yeah. And they do videos in like different languages. So it's like really cool what they do. Another channel that I like to watch uh, lately, I've recently discovered his channel that I've been watching quite a few of his videos and his name is Evan Edinger, I think. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Remind me not to put some food in my mouth, like, in the middle of answering the question. <laughs> but I guess that's the point of, like, a mukbang. Anyway. Evan Edinger, Edinger, he's this American dude that lives in London. And he's just kind of, like, goofy, like, kind of nerdy, but, like, really funny. I think I really like his videos because, A, he's funny and he seems really sweet. Um, kind of nerdy, but, you know, cute nerdy. And I think it's also because, like, he lives in London, he's also, like, you know, foreign, like, from North America, and I still live in London, so it just kind of, like, reminds me of that. Uh, so I feel like we can relate in that field. Who else have I been watching? Um, let me see here. Let's go to my YouTube channel. Let's go to my subscription feed. Mm -hmm. God damn. Most of the people I watch are, you know, vegan slash food related channels. Um, oh, it's Judy's Life. Oh, I do love watching the Philip DeFranco show. He's awesome. I've been watching him like, he's probably the YouTuber that I've like been watching the longest, like 
for like most consistently like I don't watch all his videos but like I do watch it like once in a while whereas a lot of youtubers that I used to watch I don't really watch anymore you know just natural progressions um, I sometimes watch fun for Louie who else let's see here oh there's this couple in Toronto there they are where are they today with Trey they're like daily vloggers but they're not like daily daily vloggers but they like vlog about their life cute couple they live in Toronto they have like I think two kids and they do like prank videos and stuff like that and I just think they're really cute so I watch them mm. Are you most excited about professionally and what are some of your goals for the future I think I'm excited about first of all short term I'm excited about releasing my ebook and getting that out there it's very exciting for me because I feel like that's the exciting thing about social media and like internet that people like regular people can just like put ourselves out there and like create things that we weren't really able to create before and like share with the world you know like publishing an ebook, for example. Um, I'm just doing everything myself and it's just gonna be very like, you know, like me making it. Whereas like traditionally speaking, like that just isn't possible to like publish a book uh, without going through a publisher and making sure that like the publisher likes it and like going through all of those levels of bureaucracy. And nowadays, like you don't need to do that. And that's so exciting for me. So yeah, the ebook, that's the short term. Very excited about that. I'm almost done it, almost. I think I need just like literally one or two more weeks and then I will be finished hopefully. I want to get it out before Christmas so yeah. You know I'm just excited about where this channel will take me. I'm excited about um, what I can do within the vegan space. I'm so happy that I'm able to do this as a job. I mean that's crazy talking about veganism and talking about food and eating food in front of the camera and showing people recipes and and like just you know creating content making videos for a living is just so much more fun. I'm excited to, you know, network more, meet more people within this space and do bigger things as well. So yeah, right now I'm just taking it one step at a time, but uh, I am excited about what, what the future is. Oh my God, do I look weird? Sorry, I got the Mulan hair thing going on. <laughs> I was gonna do my hair, I was gonna like do eye makeup and stuff and I was like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like it is getting dark, so I'm like, Fuck this, I'm just gonna sit down and film this. Oh, should we do like a Snapchat question even though I don't have that many questions on Snapchat? Okay. Sorry, I think I seriously accidentally opened a, c a couple and then I like pressed repeat but then now I can't like, I can't replay it. I don't understand Snapchat people. Okay, so let's see. Oh God. My question is if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? Okay, so that's from Snapchat. Um, oh God damn. Oh, that's a good question. Honestly, like, like if I wanted to travel somewhere new, like anywhere, like no boundaries, I would probably say I would want to go to the Serengeti in Africa. I want to see the animals in the wild. Like, I just want to, I've been wanting to do that for so long, but it's really expensive. Um, it's like a really expensive trip. Like you have to go on a tour and like, yeah. And I've never been to Africa, so I would love, love, love to go there. Like, if no other boundaries, didn't have to worry about financials, definitely there. Um, realistically speaking, um, I would love to go to South America. I wanted to go to Machu Picchu for so long. Ooh, bourbon. I also would love to go back to London for a bit. <laughs> I do miss it, guys. I miss it. I miss London. It's like, it was my second home, you know? Hi, so I was wondering was, what were your thoughts about uh, horse riding because I know that's because I know that's a big debate uh, in the vegan world and I just wanted to know what you think about it. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, she asked what are my thoughts on horseback riding? Uh, I look. I'm not an expert in this field. Uh, I don't know enough about horses and about what horseback riding does to horses. Um, you know, I don't know if it's a matter of they naturally allow you to ride them and they naturally, kind of like dogs naturally just want to be around humans and like, you know, want to be like a guy's, a man's best friend. 
I don't know if that's the way it is for horses. Um, I'm obviously against like horse racing and things like that. That's for sure. Like just no. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm against like carriages. Anything to do with like just kind of like making these horses like work. Like I said, I don't know enough details about horseback riding to really have an opinion on it. Um, but I would love to know what are your opinions. That is a very good question. Um, I would really like to know what people's thoughts are. If you guys want to give me more information, I am happy to read that. Um, I don't participate in horseback riding. Um, I don't ever intend on doing it, so um, I guess I haven't done my research on it. Um, but I would love to know your thoughts on that as well. Thank you for your question. I'm gonna have a bite. Hey Rose, uh, my question is, are you planning to go to the United States anytime soon? Preferably Austin, Texas. Aww. Hi girl! Check out that girl on uh, YouTube, guys. Her YouTube channel is, I think it's called Vegan Made Easy, but easy like easy. She's so sweet. Am I planning on going to the US anytime soon? Hmm. I do want to go to the US soon. Um, and I do kind of have plans to go to the US at some point in the future. I can't say anything just yet, but um, it may happen, okay? In terms of Austin, Texas, uh, I've never really, Thought about going there but I think it'd be a fun place to go I think it'd be different and also it's a pretty big city isn't it so I would like to see it I've never been there so maybe I will one day maybe I will maybe there are cheap flights let's see can I stay with you <laughs> okay let's go back to Instagram I'm just gonna have a bite mmm Woman celebrity crush? Hmm. I don't really have like, <laughs> I don't really have like a celebrity crush, um, a woman celebrity crush. I like, I love Kate Winslet. Um, I love Meryl Streep. Does that count? <laughs> I love, uh, Jennifer Aniston. She just seems like a really nice person, you know? You know when somebody just seems really down to earth, just really, really nice and just like genuinely good person? Like, she just seems like that. Apparently I like the older generation. <laughs> Because I don't know who else to crush on. I don't really like idolize celebrities or anything. At least not anymore. So, How do you get your tofu to taste good? I always find mine tastes too much like soy even though I try to use sauce and stuff. Um, well, first of all, like maybe you just don't like tofu. I don't know. Because I just personally love tofu. Like I can eat it like on its own. Like I don't really need any sauce whatsoever. I can just literally just fry it up put some salt on it and just eat it like that, or I can even just eat it raw with some kimchi and I just love it. So it, it could be the chance that you just don't like tofu. And that's fine, you don't have to like tofu as a vegan, like that's not the only thing you can have as a vegan. Um, I think if you fry it, like, well you can deep fry it, but that kind of, that might get rid of the health benefits. Um, but you can also shallow fry it, is it called shallow frying? Anyway, you can shallow fry it, you can just cut it, when you cut it up into really thin pieces, like not super thin, but like maybe like, I don't know, one centimeter? or like half an inch, something like that. Um, if you cut it up into thinner pieces and then you like fry it uh, with a little bit of oil, um, I find that it's like a lot crispier and um, it probably won't taste as like tofu, like, I don't know. And then you can also marinate stuff with like really, really strong sauces. It depends on what sauces you're using. You know, some sauces are really strong. So if you use strong, like really spicy, like Asian style sauces, then you might be able to mask the taste. But yeah, I just love the taste of tofu in general, so I'm, you're probably asking the wrong person. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Okay, this one's a long one. I have been vegan for about half a year now and I still wear my leather boots and wool jumpers that I bought prior to making this lifestyle change. I've been asked about it and even been insulted for doing so. It makes me very insecure now to say that I'm vegan because I have to explain the matter over and over again. The thing is though, that I can't afford to replace a lot of clothes just like that. I know I shouldn't care what others think so much, but it does affect me a lot since going vegan. 
What do you think? Is it okay to still call myself a vegan even though by definition it wouldn't fit? Because since going vegan, I haven't bought any clothes or foods that contain animal products. Shortly, my short answer is yes, you can call yourself a vegan. The people that are insulting you don't fucking know what they're talking about, okay? Because they don't understand what it means to be vegan. Like, sure, like technically by you wearing leather or wearing fur or whatever it is that you're wearing, like technically you may not be a vegan, but like it's not about technicality here. Like it's about, you know, what like you're doing, what you're actually doing, like now onwards. It doesn't make sense to throw things away. Um, I know some people do and some vegans do. Maybe they give it out to charity, I don't know. Um, but if you already own something, then the damage is unfortunately already done. And as long as you're not buying any of that in the future, you can call yourself a vegan. It's all about supply and demand and you've already, like this is like done deal. Like you've already bought it. It doesn't make sense to be wasteful. So there's nothing wrong with wearing those things. Just say like, look, I don't buy it anymore. So yeah, I can call myself a vegan because like that's what most vegans do anyway so you're not the only one girl you are not the only one um a lot of vegans do exactly what you're doing and it makes a lot more sense throwing things away i just feel like it's just a matter of like you know your own preference um, you do not have to replace everything like it, that's just wasteful like i said and that creates diff different problems you know it's a wasteful issue like we have enough waste as it is you don't need to waste more things just use what you already have and just don't buy it in the future and that is all there is to it. So yes girl, you are vegan! Oh my god, there's so many questions on Instagram. Okay, let's see. What is your favorite book or movie? Uh, okay. Mm. I don't really have a favorite book. When I was young, I was obsessed with Harry Potter, like everybody else. Um, lately, I've been trying to read more and do more of that. Um, recently, one of the favorite books that I've read recently was called Us. Um, really good story, just awesome book. I recommend it. It's called Us. It's about like love and family and relationships and past and future and just like so many different things. I really recommend Us. Um, but yeah. I mean, I've read quite a few like really good books, but I wouldn't be able to like pinpoint one and say like that's my favorite book One day, hopefully I just need to read more favorite movie is Titanic. Yay. I know kind of cliche But I love Titanic so much. I love everything about Titanic. I watched that movie so many different times I just think it's a beautiful movie so well made um, I love just everything about it everything about Titanic plus that was when Leonardo DiCaprio looked so hot <laughs> What did you study? Um, so in university, I studied international business. That is my major, and I got a minor in communication studies. What is your favorite alcoholic drink? I like my red wine. Red wine is probably my favorite. I don't really drink spirits anymore. Not really. Um, they're just a little bit too strong for me. Okay. What tips do you have for traveling on a budget? And moving to England. Oh god damn. I think I did a video on this topic about moving to England, but I haven't posted it yet I'm gonna post that on my vlog channel. I think traveling on a budget number one stay in hostels I need to do a separate video on this. This is like a full-on video number two cooking when you can um, as in like stay in places that have a kitchen available if you can because then you can, you know, cook for yourself and that saves you a ton of money. Uh, you don't have to do that all the time, but it saves you a lot of money. Uh, number three, if you are traveling to places where there are budget airlines, you can use budget airlines. In Europe, that's like the greatest thing. Like Ryanair, EasyJet, those are such cheap airlines. It's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of other tips. Tips, tips, tips. Uh, don't buy souvenirs. They're a waste of money. Uh, take pictures instead. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure I have more, but I'm just trying to power through this thing because it's getting so dark. Oh my god. How do you adjust to Korean family parties that serve lots of dishes of animal products in it? This will be my first Christmas dinner with my Korean family this year. Oh god. Okay, to be honest, I haven't been to like really any big Korean family parties, especially since going vegan. Um, in my family, my immediate family, my parents, like they obviously, you know, we they make vegan food for me. Um, but I haven't like gone to like any relatives parties or anything So it's hard to say <sighs> Ugh, It's hard to say I mean I would 
bring some of my own stuff if I can. If you're close with the people that are making the food, you can just mention it to them, tell them you don't eat certain things. There's always probably going to be rice available, so you could literally just bring some sort of side dish. Like, bring something along that you know you can eat. But yeah, that's a tough one. I just, if they understand and they can cater for you, that would be the best, uh, best option. How I planned to travel so well. <laughs> Sorry, I got a funny one. Mmm. So she needs to know like how I planned my travels. Um, I don't know. I've done this a lot, a lot, many times. I've done travel planning quite a few times. There's a few websites I use. I use Skyscanner for flights and stuff because that shows like cheap flights. I also use um, Hostel World, Hostel Bookers. Those are good for hostels, obviously. Um, I also use a website called Go Euro if I'm traveling in Europe. Go Euro dot. Calm, I think and that's the way you can actually search like how to go from this city to this city and it shows like the different forms of uh, Transportation and it shows like what's cheaper like things like that So it's really good if you're trying to decide like do I want to take the train or do I want to take a flight or something like that? Um, I use this Excel spreadsheet, you know if I'm going on like a big trip I use an Excel spreadsheet and I like write down, you know, like from this day to this day I'm going to this place from this day to this day, I'm going to this place, and then I write down like if I book the accommodation or not, that kind of stuff. That really helps keep you organized. Another thing you could do is uh, you can like actually look at a map, you know, especially if you're going to Europe, like that's what I did a lot. I had to like keep looking at maps to like plan out like how I wanted to, you know, travel. And yeah, I mean, that's it. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Um, what app slash program do you use to edit your videos? Do you use a stand when filming your cooking? Um, I use a program, an editing software called Adobe Premiere Pro. In the beginning, I used iMovie for a long time. Um, if you are starting out, I would advise just using whatever program that comes with your computer. iMovie is pretty damn good. I used it for a long time, but then I upgraded to Adobe Premiere Pro. I use a tripod when I film my videos. Currently I'm using a tripod at the moment. Um, and I use a tripod when I cook, when I use my cooking, when I do my cooking videos, I can't speak. Mm. Okay. Last question, will you be filming more Korean recipes in the future? The ones so far are amazing, aww. Definitely is my answer. I definitely will be filming more Korean recipes in the future. Full show. Full shizzle. And I still don't know how to get the questions back on uh, Snapchat. Great! Sorry if I missed your question. I suck at this. Alright, I'm just gonna finish this up because it's getting way too dark to keep talking, so. Mm. All right guys, so that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys try this recipe out. It is so good and it's so easy to make. I hope you find this. You can find this in probably a Korean or Asian supermarket or a Japanese supermarket, probably more likely Japanese. Um, but they should be pretty easy to find, actually. I think I've seen this around quite a few times. So yeah, try this out. It's so good. Um, it's so easy to make, so definitely give it a go. And once again, if you guys want to participate in the future Q&As, then definitely follow me on Snapchat and also on Instagram. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!